Okay, I think this will be my last run. Here we go. My last run for today, anyway. Trip the Dark Fantastic. That's a good one. So I think this character's name is General Slaughter, which is weird to me because I think the, that boss that I died on was called General Vermin? I guess you, you can have two generals in your army, it's just, it seems weird. So I want to avoid picking up the axes so that I don't die to the first boss because I can't hit it with the axe. Is he related to Sergeant Slaughter? Well, I think he used to be Sergeant Slaughter. But he, you know, he put in his time. Now he has more seniority. Oof. Traded blows there for some reason. There are going to be two of them. Is this a sequel to WWF? I don't know, you'll have to... You'll have to work out the canon for that. So that's the most effective... Oh! <laughs> managed not to take a death there. But jumping jumping at him and punching him in the air is really effective. It's sort of same technique I use on a lot of the bosses, but the need to speed, Toad. Wrap with the rat rocket. Oh it's birds. Do an overhand grip here just to for the repeated taps because it's easier on my wrist. I think there's a, a predictable timing for this first shot, but if you don't get that one, then try to get a charge shot on that one. I like the mountains in the background. I was saying they, they remind me of uh, Gradius 2. I'm still deathless on that. <laughs> and it still amazes me every time. What doesn't flicker? Sometimes I like to I like to do this part pacifist, mainly just to listen to the music, but it's it's harder. 
and now I'm in a tight spot. Okay, I made it. Get a little ref repair before you fight the rat rocket. Did the mountains in Gradius 2 flicker? I don't really remember it super well. that all the bosses have progress meters. Battletoads on NES's flickery backgrounds? Oh, you mean like the flickering uh, fire. Yeah, that's a bit annoying. I don't think this game has any backgrounds that flicker. Once you get the first ones out of the way, you can just throw all the rest off the platform, I guess. I'm trying to pick this one up. Not working out. finally made it over that fire without getting charged by that guy. I think it's just a matter that I didn't hesitate before doing it. Them up and toss them. Real simple. Okay, here's the boss. Just try to keep him at your giant toad arm's length. Oh, I shouldn't have jumped after that attack, but that's okay. I think I'm still deathless. I just squeaked by on the first level, but... The rest of it has gone pretty... Actually, I just squeaked by at the end of the... This spaceship part before the rat rocket, too, didn't I? It's interesting that these um, stepping stones always come in pairs. And it's kind of amazing that they they went with such compact levels for this game, like All that work to set up the new level, but they don't really linger on much of it at all. It's just like new thing after new thing, which is... That's kind of really nice, but it's also surprising. You don't really see games <laughs> made that way very often. Usually... You know, they get one thing working and then try and get a bunch of time out of it. 
But I never felt like this game was too short. Because of its difficulty, I guess. But I don't know. I really loved learning it as a kid. It's still quite fun. I kind of like how short it is now. <laughs> Is this Parallax, IRQ, or Tight Timing? I think on the Game Boy they had an IRQ for this. It's... Um, like, it's not a big problem. Like it is on the NES. There we go. But I don't know. I don't know a whole lot about Game Boy development, but it has. I know it has a lot easier time doing things like Parallax. Like, it's got an automated window that you can use. Um, I don't know all the hardware features offhand, but. I would guess that it's much simpler to pull off from the understanding I do have of it. It's faster to jump up the hill or not. The main thing that I think gains you speed in this area is anticipating the turns and just being ready to switch over on them quickly. And there's a little bit of logic to it, like... If you're going down and right for a while, you're probably going to... You know, go up and left next. That kind of thing. Oh, made it to the end already. So I was saying, it, was, it sort of feels like a combination of, like, the gear sections from the, the tube levels, the Terra tubes, and it sort of feels like the Klinger, Klinger Winger, where you just have to make tight turns, and it sort of feels like um, the Rat Race, like, all kind of combined into one level. I feel like the sword's a disadvantage. It's hard to hit harder to hit something with it. it. Does a little more damage, but in a concentrated space, whereas you had a big fist before. It's amazing, like, these levels are so short that, like, you barely get to hear a loop of the music before the level's over.
I guess there's two loops of the music <laughs> for this level. Okay, here's Big Blag. Watch out, watch out, Big Blag's about. Big Blag with the good hair. So it's been deathless up to this point, but that's about to change because I can't handle the axes in this level. I guess it's sort of an, a revolution-like idea, but expressed a lot differently. Why is there two spaces between exterminate and the... Somehow couldn't stop myself from jumping too far there. So this enemy is called the, a Muto Cabbage. It's supposed to be some sort of mutant vegetable experiment. Maybe it's a little bit Attack of the Killer Tomatoes inspired, I don't know. Oh, you think they were trying to justify? Yeah, I didn't think there was any way I was going to get around those. <laughs> and the fast ones, like, you have to do... I don't know, just the regular jumps across this level are... really tricky in general. There's one continue. So this boss I think I can just do like this. I can really see Donkey Kong Country in this level? How so? So I'm literally just sitting here and tapping B. Oh, I just needed one more hit. Oh well. What do you see from Donkey Kong Country in this level? I don't remember... Well, there's the, the treetops levels, maybe. A little bit like that. I love the smell of blasters in the morning. That's not the only Apocalypse Now reference. Or no, I'm thinking of um, the Dark Queen Don't Surf. Okay, I've already messed this level up. I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> 
Sorry, I'm not sure if I finished saying what I was saying, but yeah, like there was in um, Battletoads NES for the surfing level, there was. Don't worry about the Dark Queen, because the Dark Queen don't surf. And yeah, here it was. Oh, I actually made it through that spot damageless. So it alternates between these Space Invader sections and then. I'm actually doing pretty well. Oh, I did it! <sighs> okay. And yeah, I love the smell of blasters in the morning, I guess. I love the smell of napalm in the morning was the line from Apocalypse Now. So you gotta pick up this hammer. I might beat this. So you whack one arm until it falls off. So now uh, Robo Manus is more like a Robo Sin Manos. I don't know. But here you just whack the head and hope some of the flying uh, oil or whatever this is doesn't land in the middle where you are. There we go. I got him. That's it. And we rescue our two brothers, Rash and Pimple. And the totally awesome trio are reunited and ready for action once again. Don't bet on it, Bird Brain. I'll be back soon with a vengeance. And that was it. That was uh, Battletoads for Game Boy. I like that game. You know, I would really recommend this as like a first Battletoad game. It was my first, my first Battletoads game, but it's it's so much lighter than the NES one. Much more approachable. Has a much faster pace. It really gets you from, like, new thing to new thing. And, uh... It's got such great music. This is a good game. <laughs>